Hey there, welcome to section one of chapter 12. This chapter is exploring solids, so we're going to explore some 3D objects. Going through our vocab, um, a polyhedron is just a solid bounded together by polygons that enclose a single region of space. So those 3D objects, a polyhedron has no round edges, and we'll talk a little bit more about that here in a little bit. Um, some of the anatomy of a polyhedron, the first one is called a face. So your faces are the polygons, so your rectangle, triangle, pentagon, etc. of the polyhedron. So notice where your um, little diagram over here um, points to, that is a face. An edge is a line segment formed by the intersection of two faces. So here is an edge is a line segment, so remember that. And then a vertex is just the point where three or more edges meet. So a point, it's gonna be your point of um, intersection. So a lot of similar characteristics of just a 2D object. All right, a base, so used to um, name a polyhedron, and we'll talk a little bit more about that as well. Um, it is going to be a polygon, so notice I have a big B here and a big B here. There are two bases in a prism, and notice those are your um, two congruent um, faces that we'll call bases, and the polyhedron, notice it is a pentagonal prism. My bases are both pentagons, so that is how I name <clears throat> excuse me, my prism. Regular polyhedrons are just uh, polyhedrons whose faces are all congruent. Convex, um, any two points on the surface can be connected by a line segment. So there's no concave point. So going back to 2D, I may have a pentagon that looks like that. That is convex. Concave is when something indents inside, and that's the same thing that can be applied to a polyhedron. Platonic solids are just five famous regular polyhedrons. We are not, <clears throat> excuse me, going to be really focusing on those, but that's just a little bit of something extra that goes with this section. And then cross sections is just the intersection of a plane and a solid. So if you would cut um, this um, cylinder diagonally, if you notice, you see an ellipse or you see an oval. It's the 2D object, so you're naming something 2D. If I cut um, the cone parallel to its base, I see a circle. So if it's parallel to the base, I would see the base itself, which is a circle. All right, let's get into some of the information. Two types of solids or polyhedras, we are going to talk through. The first one, if I see a shape, two shapes that are congruent, that are connected by rectangles. So notice that those two triangles are connected by rectangles. This is called prisms. And I would name this prism by its base. So my bases are triangles, so I would call it a triangular prism. So prisms are, they have two bases that are congruent. And they're con the bases are connected by tr uh, rectangles. All right, well, what if you see a solid that comes to a point, one single point, and I have one base? Logically, if you think about maybe something you've seen in history, that is called a pyramid. Pyramids have one base. And from your base, you have triangles that come to a point. One single point. So I would name 
this pyramid by its base. So the base is a square. So I would say this is a square pyramid. Remember, polyhedrons are connected by polygons. <clears throat> so what isn't a polyhedron? Remember, no, a polyhedron does not have rounded edges. So if it is not a polyhedron, I see rounded edges, which are these examples in this section. So notice this has um, a circular bottom. So I would name this as a cone. Think of an ice cream cone. My next one, I have um, a rounded base, which makes my sides rounded. This is a cylinder. Think of a soup can or maybe a can of, can of Coke or something like that. And my last one, um, everything is round and this is considered a sphere. So a soccer ball, a volleyball, a, the world, the globe, something like that. All right, so let's do some examples. Tell whether the solid is a polyhedron. So if it is a polyhedron, you would see no round edges. If it is, name the polyhedron and find the number of faces. So the faces are the polyhedrons, the vertices are the points, and the edges are the sides, the line segments. So um, A is a polyhedron, yes. It comes to a point up here, a single point. So I know it's a pyramid, and I'm going to look at the base. The base is a triangle, so I'm going to name this a triangular pyramid. All right, how many faces? This is a little bit tricky because it is a 3D object on a 2D surface. So I know here's one, two, the bottom is three, and that back side where that connects would be four. So I have four faces. Vertices, let's see how many points I have. So one, two, three, four vertices, and edges. So I'm just going to count one, two, three, four, five, and six. All right. We will talk um, in a little bit how you can check yourself to make sure you counted correctly. We'll talk about that in just a second. All right, the next one, B, do I see any rounded edges? That would be no, so this is a polyhedron, yes. I have two bases that look like they are connected by rectangles. So there's one base. There is another base. In this section, we're going to consider a base a face. So that base is a hexagon, six sides. So I'm going to say this is a hexagonal, and it has two bases, so it is a prism. All right, let's count. Faces, I have two on the top, then I have six sides, so six, seven, eight faces. Vertices, I have six on the top, six on the bottom. So I would have 12 vertices and edges. I have six on the top, six on the side, and six on the bottom. So that would give me 18. All right, <clears throat> on the next one, I see this rounded edge. So is it a polyhedron? No. On your daily, you will possibly have to name it. So I see a half, a cylinder, and a rectangular prism. All right, stop this video and do your checkpoints real quick. <laughs> All right, and moving on, here is a theorem called Euler's Theorem. This is where, uh, what you can use to just verify you are counting correctly. So, 
your faces plus your vertices must equal your edges plus two. So make sure that that formula checks out every time you count. And if it does, then you have counted correctly. Um, that formula makes a polygon or a polyhedron. Makes a polyhedron. All right, so let's check our progress for, or let's use the Euler's theorem for number two. Find the number of faces vertices and edges of a polyhedron shown. Check your answer using Euler's theorem. All right, so let's first name it. I do see a triangle, but it does not come to a single point. So if you think about a slice of cheese, here is a triangle and on the bottom, there would be a triangle also. So that would be two bases, so I know it's a prism. Now those rect or those triangles are connected by these rectangles right here. So I would call this a triangular prism. All right, how many faces do I have? And this is where it kind of gets tricky. I have one on the top, one on the bottom. And then I have three on the sides. So three, four, five faces. Two of those being bases, vertices. I have three on the top and three on the bottom. So that would be six. And edges. I have three on the top, three on the side, and three on the bottom. So three, six, nine. So using Euler's theorem, I'm going to say faces plus vertices must equal my edges plus 2. Does 11 equal 11? That would be yes. So it is a polygon because um, Euler's theorem is a true statement. Go ahead and check your progress of Euler's theorem right below. Your answer is no, but make sure you show your work and explain why that must be true. All right, last part, cross sections. Oops, went a little too far. <clears throat> cross sections, when I describe this, um, I'm gonna describe a shape formed by the intersection of the plane and the solid. So think about cutting that solid. The cross section is gonna be, I'm gonna list a 2D, so your cross-section answers may be something like a circle, or a square, or a rectangle, and there's other answers, but you will not be saying a prism, or a cone, or any 3D object. So if I think about a ball being cut by a plane, I get this shape right here. So if I cut a ball, I would see a circle if I kind of opened that up. If I am cutting a pyramid perpend or parallel to its base, I'm going to see the base itself. So I'm going to see a pentagon. If I would cut it perpendicular to the base, I see one of the faces. So I would see a triangle in that case. And then if a cylinder is laid on its side and it is cut um, horizontally, I'm gonna see a rectangle. If maybe I cut that shape perpendicular to or parallel to the base itself, in that case, I would see a circle. <coughs> So that is kind of getting you used to how it, the um, solid is being cut and what you would see there. And here are three examples to check your progress. In this instance, I cut a sliver off of the corner, and in that case, I'm going to see a triangle. Go ahead and do the other two. Um, we will be checking for that information, but that wraps up section one. Thanks.